So now, it's raining piglins. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Welcome everybody to another Minecraft episode on the Project Hydra server. This is Season 2, Episode 2, The Golden Episode. That's right, in today's episode, we're talking about gold. Lots of gold. In fact, we're going to be wearing gold, we're going to be trading for gold, we're going to be gaining gold, and maybe even making a gold farm. We'll have more gold than we will know what to do with. Hello, First Mate Featherworth. How are you doing today? Excellent. So, I logged into the server today, and I noticed there's two packages that strangely appeared in my base. I don't see anybody else's base being built around here. But yeah, I don't know how people have found me already. I mean, there's lots of people online. Let's see what they, uh, let's see what they brought. Pig bones, pig flesh, the king piglin, a golden crown. We know what you did. Well, that makes one of us. What did I do? I didn't kill any piglins. I mean, thanks for the crown and the bone meal and free food. Maybe I'll blend in. And uh, what's in this box? <gasps> A respawn anchor. And it's completely charged. Look at that. Respawn point set. We're good to go. Thanks for the gifts, people. Okay, here goes nothing. I'm gonna trade with the piglins. See if they can get me some better equipment before I take on this fortress. The zombie piglin are here. Hello, Mr. Hoglin. Come to my hidey hole. I hear a second one. Ow. Ow. I don't want to die in my hidey hole. I did die in my hidey hole. You get an ingot. You get an ingot. Got some obsidian, got a fire charge. Alright, I don't want to use all my ingots because that would mean not having enough gold to make a new chest plate, which these guys stole. Yeah! <laughs> Ooh, a guest here. Oh, it is such a game changer going fast on the soul sand and the soul soil. All right, we're all set. We got some food, we got some tools, we got plenty of ammunition. We're all armored up, and we're ready to take on the fortress. I see gold. Gold is worth stopping for, if you ask me. So that takes a couple off the checklist for today. We're wearing gold, we've traded gold, and now we've obtained gold. So I need a way in. <laughs> yes, Domino, gold acquired. Hello, piggy. That is a lot of wi wither skeletons. There's like six of them here. What am I gonna do about the... the blaze? Okay, piglin's in the way. <laughs> Move, please. There's kind of a battle going on. I, d I don't know if you noticed. Uh oh. No, 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 no. I was in the middle of a battle with a wither skeleton and he was just walking back and forth. Back and forth. Yeah, you. You did this. Okay, all my tools and none of the armor. I got a new hidey hole. I'm going to try to trade with the piglins again. Ow. Ow, how did you get in? Get away. Okay, now they're now they're fighting the hoglins. Might give me a chance. Oop. Not good. Not good. Not good. Into the hidey hole. Nope. Nope. Okay. So now I'm out of gear, I'm out of gold, and I'm <laughs> out of luck. And they've traded all my stuff. Oh, they're shooting. They're shoot I don't have any gold because you took it all.
let's do a little recap. So we put on gold, so we were wearing gold. We obtained some gold. We lost some gold. We traded for gold. And now we lost everything. Let's see here. Oh, I do have a golden chest plate. So I'm going to get some more gold to go trade with the piglins. I roughed it for quite some time. Uh, but I did end up getting 34 more golden ingots to trade with the piglins. Okay, do you guys, do you guys like me again? Vando, your stuff is here. Love Danny and Chairman. Aw. So nice of them. Back to the hidey hole. A crossbow? That wasn't mine. It has durability <laughs> zero. Ooh, iron armor. Alright, I'm putting on the soul speed. No, 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 come on. Why, 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 why? No! Grab the stuff, grab the stuff, go for the obsidian. Prioritize. Oh, he's blowing stuff up, he's blowing stuff up. Can I wear any more? Yes, I got the soul speed. Okay, put on the chest plate. Don't die, don't die. Stop blowing holes in my house. Stop it. <laughs> We're back. Featherworth is safe. We're safe. We got some gifts from Danny and Chairman. We got three blocks of obsidian, which we can use to finish that portal. When that guy leaves. So I'm going to catch my breath. And we'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by gold. Gold is one of the rarest, most useful blocks in all of Minecraft. It can be made into tools and armor for all your protective and utility needs. Pretty spiffy if you ask me. Gold can also be crafted into food, nuggets, ingots, and blocks. It also has redstone functionality. But wait, there's more! Gold nuggets and ingots can be crafted into nutritional and alchemical ingredients, like glistening melons, golden apples, golden carrots, and more. You can also craft redstone components using gold, like light-weighted pressure plates, redstone clocks, and powered rails. You can even craft new blocks with gold. If you have raw gold, you can make raw gold blocks, and gold ingots can be turned into golden blocks. You can also find gold in the nether. Hey Fando, what else can I do with golden ingots? Well, I'm glad you asked, my friend. Golden ingots can be traded with cleric villagers and piglins for some awesome deals. Hello, Bjork. Would you like a gold ingot? Look at all the emeralds I have. Amazing deal. Hey, Bjork. Here's a golden ingot. Ooh, spectral arrow. Thanks, Bjork. What a great deal. Are you disappointed in the trades that your villager offers? Well, gold can help. All you need is to wait for a zombie to come by and infect your villager. Perfect. Simply craft up a golden apple and brew a splash potion of weakness, and you'll have your villager cured in no time. He'll be so thankful, he'll give you a discount. And just like that, he's cured. Just look at all those discounts. Gold, opulence, and utility for everyone. I think the guests have cleared out. So I can finally finish the portal frame. Hmm, something's missing. Battle stations, Featherworth. We're gonna invade the fortress. Okay, so this time, whoop, I switched to a axe so I won't accidentally hit a zombie piglin.
Ooh, skull. Skull! Okay, I am in the fortress. Ah! Come on. There we go. Made it to the first corner. Second corner. First intersection. Stairs goes down, and a chest. Two chests. Three chests! Diamond's nice. This is nice. A used bow. Let's see if I can get some arrows. What's in this one? Diamonds. An obsidian. That's good. I can remake my portal. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. The last thing I need out of here is this. But yes, I need another wart. And because I'm a nice person, always leave one. It's a renewable resource. So always leave one. That's the rule. Unspoken rule. <gasps> Red mushrooms. Let's just go down a little bit. Thank you. And we got him. And this is our stop. Another fortress successfully raided. And we're back home safe. That was a lot of work. Thanks, Danny and Chairman, for bailing me out. I really appreciate it. And now I can go to the surface, make TNT, and blow a hole through the, the bedrock roof of the nether. And then I'll be able to build the best gold farm on the server. So let's see what the surface world is finally like. Hmm. Looks like I'm still trapped underground, even on the surface. Pickaxe here. Let's see if we can find a way out of here. Oh, I see a person. I see a person. Who it is? Oh. Hello. A person. Hi, Domino. Hey, Fando. What's going on? Um, I'm lost, and I found a giant cavern with Ooh. a lagoon in it. That looks pretty cool. I just, yeah. uh, I just escaped from the nether. I have a portal down there. Down oh. that way-ish. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just picked you. Pretty sure there was like a cave-in. And uh, I broke a block earlier and the whole thing started flooding. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. This, um, this looks like a bed and... <laughs> definitely exactly. definitely dead end here let me plug it up with another rack if we dig like a oh. oh water let's see it says we're in a uh warm ocean so if we hit water then we're going in the right direction. So it looks pretty warm to me. Yeah, How are your toes? I, your toes are nice and toasty. In fact, uh, the water, this water is cooling them off because, you know, nether, every, water just evaporates. Hmm. I, I wonder oh, if... Yeah. Have you ever tried getting water into the nether? Uh, I did once. Um, it didn't work. Oh. Well, I, w I wonder if I could test on that. In fact, I think it's time for Handicraft Corner. Isn't this nice? Fishing's one of my favorite things to do in Minecraft. It's relaxing. There's no stress. There's plenty of water to do it. And you can get some pretty good loot. Well, you know what I mean. Water is one of the world's most precious resources, and it's used for so many things, 
It grows your crops. You use it for making potions. You can make elevators using magma blocks and soul sand to allow you to traverse great heights or depths with ease and not have to worry about running out of breath. It's a very handy thing to have. And if you don't have a bubble vader or a magma elevator to save you from a long fall, a water bucket comes in very handy. I actually did that on my first try and I'm really proud of it. So what happens if you try using a water bucket in the nether? That's interesting. As you saw, water evaporates in the nether. So on today's Handicraft Corner, we're going to be showing you how to bring water to the nether. So if you've ever tried bringing water to the nether yourself, you've probably done this. You reach for a bucket of water, and you try placing it anywhere, and it just fizzes out. Just instant evaporation. You're not allowed to place water in the nether. Okay, so what do you do? You take a water bottle, and you drink it. And now you, now you have water in the nether. Technically. Okay, so you probably don't want to just drink water. You want to have water to either fish or do your crops or something. Okay, well, the next best thing, splash water bottle. Eh? Look at that. Throw some of those down, and you can hydrate anything. If you or your pets are on fire, you can just toss one of these, and you're no longer on fire. Okay, still not convinced? Okay, let's try something else. Okay, so the next thing is, you can bring in buckets of fish. Right? You get a bucket of salmon, bucket of puffer fish. Surely these will work, because the there's, there's a fish in there, right? Maybe we can glitch the water into the nether? Nope. The fish comes, but the water doesn't. Look at that. Okay, we gotta scoop these guys back up. They're safe. We got them. Don't worry. Okay, so none of that worked. Now what can you do? You can always take some of your favorite stained glass and maybe some carpet, and you can just place these down there. That looks like water, doesn't it? Yeah, look at that. You can, you can, you can totally... You can totally swim in it. Hmm. Well, okay then. What about ice? Ice melts in the nether, right? Well, yeah, ice melts. But it evaporates as soon as it does. It doesn't even become a water block. And packed ice... Well, packed ice and blue ice... They just don't melt at all. In fact, if I were to take blue ice and put it directly into the lava... See? Nothing. Packed ice, nothing. Normal ice? I guess you could say I'm standing on thin ice. Okay, for real this time. So if you ever tried bringing water into the nether, you've probably tried to do it with crops, right? So you put out a little area of dirt, and you till up the soil, right? And you try putting water to the side, and it just fizzles out. Right? We've already tried that, okay? If you actually get yourself a cauldron and you fill it up with water, it actually stays in the nether. No tricks, no shenanigans. You actually have water in the nether with cauldrons. Not convinced? Well, watch this. You till the soil, and it gets hydrated. Isn't that cool? The soil gets hydrated. You can grow your crops. And you don't have to worry about the hostility of the nether. Now let's plant some crops. There we go. Well, all right. That should do it. So now all we have to do is sit back and watch them grow. So if your friends don't find you captivating, they should at least find you crafty. Now if you excuse me, I got some fishing to do. Almost to the top. Yes. Ooh, sand. Oh, S coral sa and sand. Coral and sand, we did it. Oof. We did it. Well, I can see the sun. <laughs> <laughs>
praise the sun. Ah, uh, I haven't seen the sun yet this season. Ah, uh, thank you so much for helping me out of there. Uh, ah, yeah, no goodness. Problem. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go find a base. Just and... gonna tag along till you find land. Okay. All right. This is good enough. Thanks again, Domino. I'll uh, see if I can find a spot around here to make a makeshift shack and uh, connect it with my my ship in the nether. Yeah, sounds good, and I'm happy to help. I will uh, see you around. Yeah, see ya. Bye. 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 Well, I got my little desert shack all made up. It's completely spawn-proof on the outside, at least. Got the slabs on top. Next to these uh, two ocean ruins that somehow made themselves on land. Got a cactus farm going. Bamboo, nether portal, mine shaft, uh, rudimentary tree farm. And on the inside, I got a little furnace array. I got crop farm with the best crop, potatoes. I got an actual bed. I got first mate Featherworth without a name tag. Got some uh, glow berries that I can see out my fence post windows. Uh, rudimentary storage. And of course, a bust to Domino Phoenix for helping me find my way to the surface. Thank you, Domino. I appreciate your efforts. So, what's next in the episode? Well, I said it's all about gold, right? Well, we wore gold. We're still wearing gold. We gained gold. We lost gold. We spent gold. And now, we're going to farm for gold. And in order to do that, we need to go back into the nether and break the ceiling. Okay, so I got my little setup here. I got my lever, two TNT, unbreakable blocks, and the piston. So all I have to do is get under here and spam click in this corner a second piston as the TNT is going off and it should break a hole in the bedrock below it. So I got extra supplies here just in case. Uh, it doesn't work on the first time, which it usually does. Not work the first time. Ow. Nope. Nope. Well, that looks different. Let's see if it works. Yes! We have a hole. Look at that. Ah! Ah! What was that? <laughs> How did you get up here? <laughs> I mean, I'm a phoenix. I'm from the nether. Oh, that's true. Well, good to see you up here. I'm going to build a gold farm. I like gold. You like gold? Uh -huh. You want you want to be business partners? That sounds like an excellent plan. Yeah, I mean, since you helped me out getting out of the Nether, uh, the least I could do is uh, pay you back with something. Ah, oh. well then let's shake on it. Okay. <laughs> My shake was more like a punch right in your face, but okay. All right, so we have access to the nether roof, so I will get started, and it is time-lapse time.
And it is done. Look at it. Beautiful zombie piglin farm. A radial design by none other than the one, the only, Waddles. That's right. I took this design from Waddles because he is an engineering genius when it comes to Minecraft farms. This this guy, Waddles, he accounted for everything when he designed this farm, and I believe it was back in 1.16. So, like, this, this farm has, like, been useful for two updates to Minecraft, and it still works today in 1.18. And the way that it works is so ingenious. Like, everything you see that I made in Deep Slate, or Cobbled Deep Slate, is slabbed, so it can't spawn. There are three layers of magma blocks for the zombie piglins to spawn at. And only zombie piglins will spawn in these areas. And if you stand in the exact center of the farm which is right here on this glass block, they will spawn all the way around the player in a perfect radius. Like, it is ingenious. There, Like, no matter which corner I look at, there are zombie piglin. And it's aggression-based. So as soon as you get their aggression, they'll start chasing you. You can hop on these platforms to get to the safe zone right here. And because everything's made out of slabs, they can still see you. Which means the new piglins that spawn in will also be aggressive towards the player if any of the original ones are still around this collection area. So what that means is I can AFK at this farm as soon as I start it up. And the safest way to start it up is from the safe zone, just shoot a bow and arrow at a cluster of piglins, zombie piglins, and they'll all start marching towards me through these four corridors I made. Even the ones on the top will just jump down onto this little ledge here, and they'll all make their way towards this little chute, which I can toggle on for XP mode and just start chopping away with a looting sword or something, or I can flick the lever and the glass below goes away and they'll fall to their deaths onto those hoppers there which I have a sorting system which will filter out the gold ingots from the gold nuggets from the rotten flesh from the swords so this farm thanks to Waddles I can't thank you enough is more productive today even though it's like a two-year-old design than many of the other nether gold farms I've seen. So thank you again, Waddles. You are an amazing person. Keep it up. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Make sure I have it set to XP mode. And we're going to get aggressive. Run, 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 run. Okay. Now they're all coming towards me, but there's no way... There's absolutely no way for them to get to me. And then I'm just going to sit right here. Oh, it sounds so cool. And then I can just punch him for XP. Or... I just flick the lever. And they all just go down the chute. They're pushing each other in. And as you can see behind me, more keep spawning in, and they're all aggressive because the ones at the chute are still going for me. So I can just sit here in AFK and watch them drop and hit the hopper down there, and everything will be automatically sorted into the respective drops. 100% AFK gold farm in the nether. I love it. And then, of course, if I ever want to turn it off, all I have to do is get to a safe spot that is a significant distance away. 
Oh, it's much more quieter, isn't it? Look at that. So now... It's raining piglins! Gold is raining from the sky! <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Oh, it's too effective! <laughs> They're still up there. Oh, uh, look, look at all the drops. 17 levels just... <laughs> what just happened? They're still coming. I have... I've had more gold in the first minute of running this farm than I had my entire first episode of grinding, even up until this point. Like, there's so much gold, so much XP, the zombified piglin heads. I'm gonna have to... I might have to make a... an additional filter for the heads, because this does not account for that. But that will have to wait for next episode, because I'm out of time. We got gold, we spent gold, we lost gold, we gained gold, we farmed gold, and we traded gold. It is episode two of season two, the golden episode. Thank you all for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye for now. Bye.